What's going on, smart people? You read the title. Today, I had a Skype interview with a potential grad school for physics, and we're going to talk about it. Now, out of respect for the university and for the people who interviewed me, I'm not going to say either of their names throughout the video. But I thought it would be fun to talk about the questions I was asked and give some of my answers to those questions. The first question was one that you'd expect to be asked in a Skype interview, but for some reason was the hardest to answer. And it was, why do you want to go to grad school? And it's hard to answer because it's hard to answer that in a way that doesn't sound rehearsed and still sounds unique. But I basically said I just don't feel like I learned enough in undergrad and I want to continue my education and grad school is just a necessary step to take to also be able to do research. You can't do research unless you have a PhD. So while that isn't an exciting answer, that is how I felt. The next question was, why do you want to go here? And that's another one that you would expect to be asked. And this one was easier for me to answer because there was an actual reason why I applied to this school specifically. And this one I'll, I'll share with you. The reason is that a lot of universities, a lot of graduate schools, separate physics and astronomy slash astrophysics. So when you apply to these graduate schools, it's kind of frustrating that you have to choose a path before you even get in. And in a lot of cases, it's choosing a path before you even know really beyond a surface level understanding what those topics are. So what I liked about this is they put astrophysics and physics together and, and just make it one program. That way you can get in, you can take your core classes, you can work with a faculty member and, and try different things out and then choose a path. So the first questions that they asked were textbook questions. Why do you want to go to grad school? Why do you want to go here? And then the next one was just talk about my research experience. They then asked me what my strengths were uh, with respect to physics. And with that, I just said computation. I think my three research projects now have given me pretty solid background in programming, and I feel very comfortable tackling computational problems now. It was at this point that it started to feel a little bit less scripted, and they started asking specific questions that were unique to me as an applicant. The next question they asked was, do I consider myself very proficient with Python? See how it's starting to get a little bit more unique to myself. And I said, yeah, well, it depends, because 100% of my exposure to Python has been answering numerical questions, right, using math with Python. So I've done a lot of work to develop the tools to solve problems like differentiation, differential equations, integration, minimization, all that good stuff, all of those numerical methods. Having said that, I haven't had to use Python for anything outside of math. So I think that was a pretty honest answer. They then asked me about my specific research interests, and this is a little bit intimidating because it's just kind of scary talking to specialists about specialties in physics when I'm specially not any of that. With that, I said, you know, it's a little too soon to say with my current internship, but I think I like nuclear theory. Astrophysics has always been interesting to me. I've, I've always wanted to learn more general relativity. I really tried to hit home that I saw myself doing theoretical physics, and that I saw programming and coding being intertwined with that, and that I was versatile with what field I do theoretical physics with, because it's just I, I don't know enough about all of the fields to choose one right now. So then now that they saw what initially I said that I'm interested in, they then started to test things that were a little bit outside to see you know, how open I was to other fields of physics. Now this is where it really helps, if you can, to research the people that are interviewing you because it's at this point that they started talking about their own fields and you need to be able to respond, you need to be able to add on to something that they say. So for instance, they started then asking me about if I was open to atmospheric physics and atmospheres on different planets and data analysis on magnetospheres and stuff and I said, essentially what I said was, so long as I'm working with equations and I'm coding and things like that, I'm open to the idea of it. I then asked a bit more about keywords that I heard when they were describing what they did, you know, making it a little bit more personal. And then one of the last questions that they asked was, in one sentence, define to you what research is. And I'm sure this isn't the best response, but what I said was, research is having an idea, doing your best to prove that idea wrong, and then being excited when you can't. Meaning it's more important to help move science forward and to find out what the answers actually are rather than for you to be right. But that was about it for the questions, unless I'm forgetting some, but I hope it goes without saying that this is not me telling you how to answer interview questions. It's just these were the questions I was asked, and this is how I responded. But I hope you guys found this helpful as to what you might be able to expect if a grad school asks you for an interview. Also, let me know in the comments section, in one sentence, 
define research. And I'll see you guys there.